and whales help fight climate change? Research done into the impact of whales on climate seems to show just that. But whales aren't exactly trees or plants that do photosynthesis, so how do they help with the absorption and capture of greenhouse gases? Well, it's complicated, but the answer lies in a mysterious and magical process called a trophic cascade. A natural process in which our main character, the whale, plays a crucial role. Whales are the largest animal that have ever lived on this planet. That alone makes them really special to me. But it also means that they have an outsized impact on their ecosystem. Everything a whale does is at a large scale. Every day they can feed on up to 4 tons of krill, they can produce 1,000 liters of urine, and crucially, 200 liters of poo. And like any good story, whale crap is where our journey begins. The key here is whale movements. You see, whales feed on fish and vertebrates in the deeper levels of the ocean, which are rich in iron, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Then, because they are mammals, they move to the surface to breathe, and this is also their toilet of choice. And they leave behind these massive plumes of whale poo, which are full of these deep sea nutrients. And these plumes then leads to big phytoplankton blooms. Phytoplankton are a microalgae that is responsible for almost 50% of the oxygen in the atmosphere, and that helps capture 40% of the carbon dioxide. That's a lot. That that is four Amazon rainforests worth of carbon capture, which is really impressive for such a tiny, tiny organism. Now, of course, whales are not responsible for all the phytoplankton in the world, but they do play a crucial role in bringing these nutrients to areas where they are really scarce. They do so through long migrations, as they often feed in nutrient-rich areas and then breed in nutrient-poor areas. These journeys can take thousands of kilometers, and as such, the whales create a sort of conveyor belt between parts of the world bringing nutrients from areas that have a lot of nutrients to areas where they are really scarce. A great example of this is the Southern Ocean, which is really iron deficient. So larger whale populations could lead to a lot more phytoplankton in those areas and also, of course, lead to a lot more carbon capture. Whales also help capture carbon in another way, by living a long and hopefully happy life by dying a natural death and then by sinking to the bottom of the ocean. I think it goes without saying that whales are pretty heavy animals. The larger species, such as the blue whales, have been known to weigh up to 200 tons. So when they die and sink to the bottom of the ocean, the carbon that is part of their bodies and that has accumulated over the course of their lifetime also sinks to the bottom of the ocean with them. So that, on average, a great whale will help capture almost 33 tons of carbon just in their bodies. These whale carcasses also provide an oasis of life for these strange and mysterious deep sea creatures. So we have established that whales are important, but how big really is this opportunity? And how can we go about bringing whale populations back? Whale populations are currently at around 1.3 million. If they were to be brought up to their pre-whaling levels of about 4 to 5 million, we could expect to store almost 122 million tons of carbon just in the body weight in the sinking of the whales after they die. However, the whale crap has the potential to do a lot more. If this increase in whales could lead to just a 1 to 2% increase in phytoplankton, we could expect to capture almost 740 million tons of carbon each year, which is the equivalent of about 10% of the Amazon rainforest. I mean, picture it. Just by helping whales, we could increase carbon capture in the oceans by one-tenth of the Amazon rainforest. That's insane. So how do we go about doing this? The conversation tends to focus a lot on whaling, which of course is horrible, but only really kills a few thousand whales each year. The main killer of whales is fishing. Almost 300,000 whales and dolphins die each year in fishing net entanglements. The next killer is plastic, which is responsible for the deaths of almost 100,000 marine mammals each year. And the majority of the plastic in the ocean is also from fishing nets and fishing equipment. So what actions can we take to prevent this? The answer, in my view, is split in two parts. As a society, we have to establish very large marine reservations, covering at least 50% of the ocean. 
And these marine reservations need to be very strict. That means no fishing whatsoever. And this also needs to be enforced through patrols and through monitoring by governments. Then what you can do as an individual is to simply stop eating fish. It's terrible for your health and while there are hundreds of labels claiming that their fish is sustainable, this is really hard to monitor and the whole concept of sustainable fishing is dubious in itself. And uh, yeah, please let me know in the comments as well if uh, you eat fish and um, if you intend to stop eating fish. And if you don't, then also please let me know why. Always good to have a discussion. So to summarize it all, whales are amazing creatures that play a key role in their ecosystem. They help capture a lot of carbon and have the potential to help us capture a lot more of it in the future. We can and we should protect them through large marine protected areas with no fishing whatsoever and on a personal level by drastically reducing or actually eliminating our fish consumption. It is all in our hands. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and subscribing to our YouTube channel. We cover all sorts of like really fascinating nature topics and how you as an individual can help fight climate change and the loss of biodiversity. Also, if you're interested in rewilding and nature restoration, please consider going to our website, mossy.earth, the uh, link is in the description, and becoming a member. By doing so, we will be funding all sorts of amazing rewilding projects that aim to tackle climate change and the loss of biodiversity. Until next time. Cheers. <laughs>